Hello everyone, my name is Danwood Chirwa. I'm a professor of law and uh, dean of law at the Faculty of Law, the University of Cape Town. I would like to make a case to you uh, as to why you should consider law as an option to study. Um, I want to share some slides with you at the moment. So, um, as I said, I would like to make a case that you should choose law uh, uh, as a field uh, to study. Uh, thanks for coming to this open day and to attending for attending this particular session. Um, I hope you also attended the session uh, which was taken co providing answers to some of the technical questions that you need uh, in your applications, uh, how to fill forms and what kind of um, other information we need. Uh, this is more about giving you the reasons why you should consider law um, as a field of study. And so why would one consider law as a field of study? It's simple. It's a fascinating field of study. Human beings have always needed law. We will always uh, be governed by law and there will be more laws and more laws to come. Especially since 1994, since the 1990s, we've seen countries become more democratic. Um, in South Africa, um, we moved from apartheid to now. Parliament has been so busy making new laws, both at the local government level, at the um, provincial level, at the national level. We also have laws at the sub-regional level, such as SADC, but also at the regional level, such as the AU, um, African Union, but also at the international level. So we have a, a an international society that is governed by laws at different levels. And these laws keep coming up as the society is becoming more and more complex, uh, they're more laws. So if one is interested in learning throughout one's life, the law is just, it's never boring. There's always something new. There are always new decisions to analyze, to discuss um, and write about. Um, there is always legal issues evolving. It's never a boring field. It's an ev ever evolving field. Sometimes this can be overwhelming, but one gets used to this, to getting interested in the legal developments, in policy development. Um, and so um, uh, it's a field that you continue to grow in. Now, it's not just about learning um, that the legal field pro uh, uh, promises. It's also about what you can do, what you can become. Unlike other academic fields, law has a profession which is there and will always be there. There will always be legal issues and legal problems and people will always need legal representation. There will always be need for courts to resolve disputes. There will always be need for parliament to deliberate and make laws. Um, government will always need lawyers. Businesses will always need lawyers. So it's a field a, a profession that they and our graduates, we feed them into that profession, which continues to absorb new lawyers. So after completing the degree, there's a market out there where uh, one could, could join. And within that market, one can become anything one chooses. One can become an uh, advocate, an attorney, um, and become um, one of the leading lawyers in the country or in international tribunals and become very rich. One could become a judge, one could become a legal advisor working with government or the private sector as a company secretary, for instance, or many other uh, positions that exist. One could work with international organizations. Um, one could work uh, at a region level, uh, at the UN level. It's, it's just uh, the opportunities are endless. It depends on which profession one wants um, to join. Now, um, as a lawyer, it's not just about what you can become in terms of getting a job, finding a position, running a business. It's also about what kind of impact you could have on society. And lawyers um, always have significant impact on society at different levels, um, either through representing the poor, 
um, the marginalized, uh, the oppressed peoples, uh, but also in terms of influencing culture, whether it is work culture, whether it is business culture, um, but also in terms of influencing politics, um, the running of the economy, um, how you regulate companies, how you regulate industries. Lawyers are involved in this. And so one could have a significant impact, could, play, could, could, could have that influence to impact change. Uh, and this field allows for that. And there are some big names I can mention here. Nelson Mandela was a lawyer. He, um, as you know, um, made a huge impact on the country and beyond. Uh, the current president, uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, is also a lawyer. So um, they are the big names um, um, as examples. And anyone who studies law can become anything really that they want uh, to be. Now, um, why would one want to study law at UCT and not other uh, faculties in the country? Um, it's simple. We are the best faculty in the country and in the region. The rankings prove that. Um, we have some of the best lecturers, people who are not just teaching, but they're also always conducting research and their research impacts uh, on their teaching. We have many research centers and research units uh, which specialize in various fields and students get the benefit of working uh, with uh, some of these research centers. Um, we still attract the best students in the country, which means you have an opportunity if you're admitted to UCT to compete with the very best in the country and in the region, um, which also means that your exposure to the best academics, the best students, means that you have such a rich learning environment. We're also very diverse, uh, at least at the student level, increasingly at the staff level as well. We are increasingly becoming more and more diverse, uh, which also means the learning experience is diverse. You are not exposed to one way of looking at things. Um, you look at things from different perspectives, which students bring uh, to the party. Of course, we have a large student uh, body, which is at the postgraduate level as well, which also uh, makes it possible for our postgraduate students to interact with um, undergraduate students and there is also a learning process that comes um, through that. So, so th 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 those are the reasons why you should choose us. We do have the best facilities. Our library is one of the best and it is housed right in the Kramer Law Building, um, which is the um, building which uh, the law faculty occupies. We are also um, one of our strengths in the faculty is that we are highly adaptable. Um, as you know, South Africa has been more or less in a crisis mode in the education sector since 2015. Uh, the pandemic last year exacerbated that, and of course it is continuing now. So uh, the ability to, for a faculty or university to adapt um, quickly to challenging circumstances and make sure that students continue to get the best they can um, we have that and we have uh, uh, evidence to prove that we have learned from last year and this year we are continuing with um, um, delivering the LOB program uh, without any hitches. Uh, we are doing it even much better this year than we did uh, last year and we'll continue to do so uh, uh, whatever challenge we face. So you would be in the best place to study law and you would be guaranteed uh, finding a job. We do have uh, evidence to show that our students get employed much quicker than other uh, students from other faculties, partly because the market trusts the product that we produce. Uh, they are used to receiving graduates from UCT who have abilities that graduates from other um, universities may not have. So our students are marketable within South Africa but also increasingly internationally, such as in Europe and in America. So those are the reasons why you should choose to uh, apply uh, for law, to study law at UCT. Uh, what we offer are two main streams. Um, one which um, uh, gets, we admit students straight from matric and they come to study law 
for four years. Then we have another uh, stream which has kind of two separate uh, in one. Um, for students with a law with with a degree, uh, either uh, following the combined stream whereby you get into humanities or commerce, but major in law from the second year and third year, um, which means that someone is taking humanities courses in second year, they begin to take law courses in third year. They also take some law courses while also uh, taking some humanities courses. The same with commerce. At the end of three years, the students get um, uh, the first degree, either a BCom or a BA, um, that's in humanities. Then for the last two years, if they meet a certain pass rate uh, minimum requirement, then they get into the LLB for two years. This program, the combined degree program, is hugely successful. Students are, are much more grounded uh, and tend to cope with the studies of law um, um, better. Then the other postgrad program is made up of three years of any degree, not humanities and commerce alone, but any degree without majoring in law. For three years, you get that degree. You come to the LLB with an additional three years to complete the LLB. So it's much compressed than the um, four year program. But these students, because they have the first degree, they are, we believe they have the ability to cope with the LLB within three years. These are the options that we have. We do not expect students to pass certain courses uh, in matric. Any courses that you do, whether it is life sciences, um, mathematics, whether it is English, um, whether you don't do very well in maths or not, you can do anything in your matric and apply to study law. But for those that didn't do well in, ma in mathematics in the first year, we expect them to take law that counts. It's a basic literacy, maths literacy course um, we, because we believe that law students or law graduates at least must have some competence in mathematics. But it's not a requirement at the point of entry. It is a requirement while you're doing uh, the degree. So there is no need to uh, pick courses that you think would be better, pre um, would make one be admitted easily. The key issue is that whatever courses you choose, you must pass them extremely well so that you can compete with others in terms of points uh, when getting into the university. With these opening remarks um, available to answer questions, um the questions in the chats okay uh prof they are primarily about the faculty point score um and how that is calculated whether applicants have to take the nbts this year um and whether maths literacy is accepted for application to law so it's those kinds of um questions so I'm happy just to provide a bit of info about the faculty point score, if that would help. Yes. OK, so um, what UCT does with applicants to ensure sort of an equitable, um, equitable access to to the university and to various degree programs and to ensure that, yeah, there's a kind of fair chance um, of succeeding in your application, UCT has implemented a system um, where they have what they call a disadvantage factor. Um, and this disadvantage factor takes various things into account. For example, the area where you grew up, the high school you went to, um, the whether English is your home language, how many of your um, either your parents, guardians or siblings have been to university, have a tertiary qualification. Those are the kinds of things they look at. And then um, you, you can get a, a, a maximum factor of 10% if you meet all of the, the disadvantage um, criteria. And then the what the application process does is it would assess your the six results from, from your six main matric subjects. Life orientation is not included. So your six other subjects 
they look at the total score of that um, and then they would take this maximum 10% or 4% or whatever it is that you um, qualify for in terms of the disadvantage calculation um, and, and they would um, work out a sort of a top up if you like. Um, so for students who are applying with what is then called the weighted point score, um, you would need at least 495 points taking that calculation into account and it is on the UCT website. It's a little more difficult to explain verbally. Um, so if you're using the weighted point score, which is designed to take disadvantage into account, the points you need are 495. That's adding together your six matric subjects besides life orientation. Um, and what we call the open category or, or band A, um, you would need 510 points for your six matric subjects and not including life orientation. Um, and so I just also wanted to point out that along with the, your, your six matric subjects, um, the university also looks at your uh, NBT results. So you have to write the NBTs this year to apply for a place at UCT for next year. Um, and those tests are, you do the academic literacy test and the quantitative literacy test, and they will look at, at how well you've done um, in those tests along with your, with your matric results and how that all adds up to your faculty point score. So I hope that's a bit clear. It's like basically band A, which is the sort of general applicant band, 510 points. And with the weighted point score, you would need at least 495. So I hope that's a little bit clear. Um, and downward, I'm just looking to see what other questions there are. People are asking about maths lit. So just to answer that again, yes, uh, maths lit is accepted um, as one of your six matric subjects. You don't need what I think is called pure maths or just mathematics. You don't need that to apply to law. So I think those those are the main questions. Yeah. Yes, I see one question. Um, questioner says, I don't see a BA law as an option to choose on the, on the online application. So, so, so what you do is you do any humanities degree that you wish. Uh, you don't have to have any specific degree um, um, in the humanities, any of them. So in the first year, once you're admitted, you will do um, the humanities courses, but um, you apply for a law major at the end of the year, then they admit you um, uh, to the law major. That's how it becomes a BA law, um, because you don't get it in immediately, but the following year, you, when you apply for a law major, then you do that. Um, how does majoring and minoring work? So it's exactly this, that um, in the humanities or in commerce, in law, we don't do this. So in humanities or commerce and other faculties, um, you are allowed in the first year, normally you choose from a bouquet of courses. And then in the second year, you begin to choose more uh, specific fields within that broad uh, faculty. And then in the final year, you choose more. So it depends if, if there are several routes, there, there, there are normally routes within the field with specializations. So a major is like when you are taking more courses in one stream. A minor is when you have taken less courses in another stream. So a major, if you say I have a major in this, it means you specialize in a particular area and the minor is a minor field. You didn't take as many courses in that field. Um, would I have to apply with my grade 11 marks as well as my grade 12, term two, uh, or can I just apply with my grade 12, term two results? Uh, Gabby? Um, so yeah, Prof, um, you would be able to apply with your grade 11 marks if you haven't yet got a set of, of mid-year grade 12 or, or term two marks. So our applications open before you would have, before applicants would have, um, would have got those grade 12 uh, results to work with. So if you're applying before those results 
um, are available, then you would use your grade 11 marks and that's perfectly acceptable. And again, these any offer that is made, are th those are provisional offers. Um, so they, the university looks for your um, grade 12 and certainly your, your final matric marks to, ma to confirm, to make confirmed offers. Um, so yes, grade 11 results are fine um, until your grade 12 results become available. Yeah, so so um, sometimes it could be given a um, uh, what we call provisional offer, and then we wait for the final results. Normally, depending on how quickly they release them, sometimes it's uh, it's earlier, sometimes it is in December. Like the, uh, this last year, it was very late, so we had very short time to make uh, decisions. But yes, that's um, that's correct. Okay, so so. Uh, funding is always an issue for students. Who's going to pay? Where am I going to find the money? Um, and there are various things to bear in mind. So if you've been to some of the other sessions, um, particularly the undergraduate financial aid uh, officers section of student affairs, they would have shared information with you about applying to the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and or to the, the um, undergraduate funding office. And there are particular um, family income criteria that apply for eligibility for support through those schemes. Um, but we know that there are a large number of students who don't uh, qualify for that support. Um, and there are a, a number of other options that uh, uh, applicants can pursue uh, to try and find funding. So there are lots of external scholarship programs and by external, I mean external to UCT. Um, and you, you need to kind of really go and look and see if you can find those. There is an undergraduate funding handbook available on on the um, UCT website, so go and have a look there. And in that um, in that set of handbooks is a handbook on these external opportunities, and there are quite a number in there that apply um, to students doing law. So you, you need to kind of get into the nitty gritty and, and do your research um, for funding. But what the faculty offers, we have a range of um, uh, privately donor funded scholarships. The faculty has made a huge effort over the last decade or so to, to attract donor funding so that we are able to offer scholarships that are really geared toward students with financial need um, and geared towards the transformation of the, the faculty in terms of who our students are. Um, so that again, there's a kind of a more equitable representation. Um, and, and, and we feel very fortunate to be able to offer usually about, let's say, seven, eight, nine, sort of around 10 uh, new scholarships every year. And those scholarships comprise uh, tuition fees only. And it's probably not enough to cover a full year of tuition. At the moment, those scholarships are 60,000 Rand or up to 60,000 Rand if you're successful. And there is a range of, of other scholarships that are also um, available. We're very lucky we've just started a new scholarship program this year, which was very uh, generously supported by an alumnus of the faculty. All of these scholarships are um, based partly on financial need, but also very much on academic performance. So they are about academic excellence. They are about um, students who are able to perform well in, in the law faculty. We don't offer those very often to first year entering students um, because we do need to see some evidence, if you like, of, of ability um, on the part of the student or part of the applicants um, to, to perform academically in law. Uh, and I know that if you were in the Students' Council session, um, I think they, they were stressing that it's a, there's a it's a large reading load. It's the thing that everyone always mentions about law is all the reading. Um, so so yeah, it's a it's a it's a tough course, and the the scholarships are very um, competitive based on marks. So have a look on the faculty website, which is I'll pop it into the questions here, um, and just have a scout around at all the info there. There's Info, all the, most of the info we've d discussed and shared with you in our sessions today is available on the website. So just have a browse through, look at all the drop down menus, 
um, and you're sure to find um, the answers that you are looking for or otherwise there are contact details on the website um, if you aren't able to find the answers you need. Thanks, Prof. Thanks. There are two questions I think that have come in. Um, the one is if I want to become a CA with the LLB, when do I apply for the LLB? Um, I guess the question is if you want to do accounting um, and then the LLB, uh, what do you do? So you apply for accounting, Bachelor of Accountancy, um, um, or Bachelor of Commerce, um, and then uh, in the second year, you you get into the major as well, just like we we're talking with the humanities. You get into the major, second year, third year, you get the BCom degree, uh, law, and then um, you 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 apply, you get to the LLB for the last two years. So it's similar to um, the humanities. I'm not sure whether you mean if you already have the LLB, you start with the LLB and you want to do accounting. Um, it doesn't work the reverse, uh, but I suppose uh, one after any first degree, you can do any other degree, including uh, accounting. So you start with the accounting major in law um, um, and uh, accounting. It could be a double major or a major in law, a minor in accounting, whatever it is. Uh, the other question is, um, ah, that question has uh, uh, it's, it's been published, maybe. I don't know. Yes, it's, yes, it has been. The one about um, whether the university receives the final grade 12 results. Yes. Yeah, uh, so I'm happy just to quickly answer that while I'm talking. Um, so the university receives these directly um, from the department, uh, the education department, as soon as they're released. So as an applicant, you don't need to worry about making sure the university gets your final matric marks the 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 university gets those from from the department so i think we've uh, addressed the questions that we have seen uh, it remains to thank you all for joining this meeting we hope that you will apply to study law and that you one day i'll have a chance to meet you and you have a chance to see us and meet gabby uh, in person thank you very much we really appreciate it